everyone. It's Renee with Delaney Jane Cards. Welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I would pop on here and post a quick video using May May Made It's stamp set called Rest. I thought it would be a perfect stamp set to share a card with you on a Sunday. Um, and I used my Gonzai Tombi watercolors. I have the 36 set and I have swatched them on the lid like it says and um, they are in Japanese or whatever, so I'll flash the numbers across the screen as I get to them. Um, I did use Canson XL watercolor paper. It is the cold pressed paper. I've been, I've been watercoloring a little bit lately and um, I want to get better at it. I have a couple of different options for watercolors in my craft room and this is my only set of pan watercolors. I know that they are kind of... Um, I would say elementary, maybe, in the watercolor genre. Uh, I know that there are lots and lots of much nicer uh, watercolor sets in the market, but this is what I have. I've had it for a couple of years, and I don't have all sorts of crafty funds, so we have to use what we got. <laughs> um, this Ink on 3 Blackout Ink um, is waterproof so it works I use it with my Copic markers it's my preferred Copic marker um, ink but I also brought it out for this watercolor I did not heat emboss this um, usually when I watercolor I heat emboss my images because then it creates the little wells I got my big girl pants on and I thought I can water this watercolor this little bird without the safety net um, and I mean, I did it. I did watercolor him. So what I really need is some tips and tricks. I will show you what I did. First, I put in the color. I, first, I put water down, and then I had wet my pans, and I put in the color. And I am putting in way, way too much color. I am coloring him like he is Copic, and he is not Copic. So what I did is had two shades of blue. I put a lighter blue and a darker blue in. I know this is not how you watercolor. Not at all. This is what I did. Um, but I did use a number two brush to do my watercoloring, um, or my attempt at watercoloring here. I thought instead of using the water brush like I traditionally pull out that I would use a real paintbrush. And then, um, look at me, I'm all mixing colors, trying, <laughs> trying to make them lighter. Uh, this is an orange. I thought he, I don't know what kind of bird I thought he might be, but I thought he might be a blue bird with an orange face because I have been loving the blue and orange combo lately. Um, I will link a video where I used the blue and orange. And then I, I learned about a thirsty brush. So I brought a thirsty brush to my paper here. And I kind of picked up more of the color because I, I really am not going for dark colors, like solid colors. I want this to look watercolored. And I... I'm trying. I'm really trying to learn. So any tips and tricks or anywhere you can send me that I could maybe learn some things, I would appreciate. I honestly would appreciate it. Um, so I wet the areas that I was putting the green down and then I added a little green. And then I went with back with a thirsty brush, which is a, a they're wet bristles, but there is no real water in the brush. It kind of sucks the paint back up, which is super cool because... I am clearly in need of a thirsty brush because I, I don't have this whole thing down. So I added red to the flowers and you can see that flower that's there on his like breast. It is so full of paint that here I went back and I picked that back up and then I painted in his little beak. I mean it is just so thickly water colored. It's, it's almost like I used acrylic paint. And I need to not do that. Watercolor is supposed to be light and airy, or I think it's supposed to be light and airy. Everybody's watercoloring that I ever looked at is. So I just was kind of struggling with this. I kept trying to get the watercolor look that I wanted. So I pulled out a bigger brush. I think this is a number eight, maybe, round brush. I got it wet, and I started to kind of move the color around on the bird again. 
because I had too much paint, too much, too much paint. Once I started to see what it would look like with more of that brightness showing, which is basically seeing the white paper through the paint, I really did like it. And then I thought I would, I don't know, I thought, I thought I would add a background around him. And I watered down a bunch of blue paint and made kind of a wash. And then I kind of, I kind of scribbled it in. I need, I need to learn. I, I am open to learning. I would love, if you make videos, I would love for you to put a link to your favorite watercolor video in my description box below. So here you can see that I am kind of lightening up the, well, I was lightening up what was there and then I, <laughs> then I brought in more color. I needed to make a sky for this little bird. So I was, I was working on it and I, I put in, and I don't know if this is right, but I put in all the blue and then I kind of took out the clouds. Um, I could have like painted around them, I guess. I, I don't know. I was just, it was, I was just kind of screwing around. <laughs> Um, but in the end it turned out kind of cute. So that's why I decided to share it with you. And there is a, a religious sentiment on the front. So I thought a Sunday would be a great day to share this video. Um, but I just kind of put in, it was a good experiment on how watercolor works. I had put the water down and then I was kind of dropping the paint into the water. And I made sure that the dye that I was going to use, um, that I had all of the colors in the right places. And then I just kind of dropped in more of this darker color to, to add more sky to the clouds, I guess. Um, just add a little variation. You know, when you look up at the summer sky, it's kind of, it's kind of cloudy and blue. And I don't, I don't know. Does it, do you think that that's how you do that? I really I don't know. You are not going to learn how to watercolor from this video. You might learn how to not watercolor from this video. Uh, like I think I was supposed to put the background in before I painted the bird. I, I don't know. Um, I do like how he's already lighter, but he's not light enough. So I use that same larger brush and I kind of move the paint around. It was so thick. It was, it looked like pans that the shiny glossy paint that you that you have in the watercolor paints that's what it looked like it was so thick on him and I was like that that is not okay we need to take care of that so then I lightened up his face too because that was really dark I, I feel like <laughs> I feel like I more so stained the paper the color I wanted it and then picked up all the paints <laughs> that's kind of what I feel like I did which is maybe maybe is exactly what I did I don't know but this little bird set is super adorable. There's actually three birds in it. Um, there's this little guy that you can put on the branch. Well, you can put them all on the branch. This guy faces um, this way. There's one that faces the opposite direction, but it's kind of standing up a little bit farther. And then I used a, a different bird in the inside. He's kind of, his face is facing you. Um, they're they're really cute and they have some beautiful sentiments. Uh, the set is called rest. So the sentiment that I end up using on the front says come to me all who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. And that's Matthew eleven twenty eight. The sentiment that I end up using on the inside is so then there remains a rest for the people of God. And that's Hebrews four, nine. But there's also the soul binds rest in God, and that's Psalms 62, 1. And yes, my soul find rest in God. My hope comes from him, and that is Psalms 62, 5. There's the three birds. There's the branch, which I used. There is um, like a little twiggy branch thing, an extra flower, like what's on all of the birds, and then a few feathers. So you could create some really cute things. I think that this would be really pretty like gold heat embossed just on some dark cardstock over and over. You could 
gold heat embossed, even the tiny little feathers, it would make a super cool pattern. And now I'm going to probably have to do that in the future because that's a good idea. <laughs> so I took this cardstock. It's that Sparkle cardstock from MFT, Cornflower, I believe, and I die cut my circle out of that. And I'm going to kind of, uh, it's kind of off to the edge. My idea is to kind of frame the bird off to the edge of my card panel. So I didn't cut the bird panel down. Um, what I did is trimmed off, you know, this sparkle cardstock and I'm going to lay this on top and then I'm going to trim the panel. I didn't want to miss cut um, because I had only watercolored so much and I didn't really want to cut that bird off. And uh, there was so much foam tape on the back. This foam tape isn't bad though. I get this from Amazon. When I first got it, I thought, oh man, it's so sticky. And I don't know, the second time I ordered it, it um, doesn't seem to be as sticky, I guess. And uh, you can, I can tear this stuff. So maybe I learned, I don't know. Um, and I had cut this tiny little gray frame from the back piece that I'm going to use to frame up this whole thing. Um, but I wanted to frame that opening. I thought that it looked much more finished this way. So I just trimmed up the panel so that um, my bird panel was the right size. And then I adhered down this whole sandwich of fun to a gray piece of cardstock here. And, um, I thought that it framed up that bird really good and it actually made my watercoloring look not too bad at that point. So then I used the perfect embossing bag. It's a strap and tap is what it's coined as, I guess. It's got a piece of ribbon on it so I don't have to touch the bag, which I am super not a fan of. It drives, it makes my fingers all icky when I touch the embossing bag. And then I embossed on this piece of um, leftover cardstock here. and. What I was trying to show is this is fine detail embossing powder, but I never get this good of results. That scrap perfect embossing bag, I have gotten the best results from my embossing since I started using that. And, and I have gone through one of the um, other bags, like the, the, the other ones that have like the sewn edges on them. Um, I, I can't think of what the brand would be, but you know the ones that I'm talking about. And then the little plastic one with the brush on the end. I have gone through that one too um, over the years. And I, I don't know. I seem to get really good results. So I just uh, adhered this little hand cut banner to the bottom to kind of um, ground my image. The blue sparkly cardstock kind of looks like the rest of the sky. So maybe it looks like we're floating in the sky in my mind. I don't know. <laughs> and then I laid a black over top so that everything would dry nice and flat. And then um, I added a little bit of white gel pen details. Something like white gel pen can add all the difference to an image. I use it all the time when I'm Copic coloring and I really like it when I'm watercoloring or pencil coloring or I like it when I'm coloring in general. It just adds some additional detail. So here's where I stamped the inside. Um, I used blue uh, ink to, to do the inside because I have so much blue on the outside, I thought it would coordinate. And then I also stamped that bird that I was telling you about that faces kind of forward. His eyes are closed. All the bird's eyes are closed. And they're just drawn so pretty and daintily. I think it's... It's just such a really pretty set. I need to play with it more. Um, so I finished the inside of my card base and then I added adhesive to the entire card panel and made sure I put plenty on because I did watercolor that bird and I wanted to make sure that he was stuck down really, really well. And then I always cut my bases wrong. So I had to trim it off. Then I made sure I just stuck down the bird because that is just watercolor paper all the way through. And then I pulled out these Richard Gare, I think that's how you say it. Um, they're matte enamel dots. Now these were my favorite enamel dot for a long time. I really, 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 really enjoyed the matte finish on these. And I've heard that like Nuvo has some drops that maybe have a matte finish. 
I don't know which ones they are. None of them that I have do. Um, but I really like the matte finish on this. So I did pull them out and I um, I absolutely love how they turned out. So here is my little watercolor uh, endeavor, uh, my watercolor card, my May May Made It Rest card. I absolutely appreciate you stopping by. I would love to know if you have a favorite video for me to watch. I would love to know if you know what those new bow drops are. I'd really love to know what you think of my card. And happy Sunday. And um, Thank you for uh, watching my video, and if you would comment and subscribe and share, I would appreciate it. And as always, give cards generously. Bye!